A couple weeks back I made a video where I established a very rudimentary UDP peer-to-peer -peer connection using Netcat and a technique called UDP hole punching. And I mentioned in that video that I would do a follow-up video where I would implement the same thing in Python and make it completely automated. So this is that video. If you have not watched that first video, it's pretty important that you do so. I'll put a link in the description and you should definitely watch that first before you watch this one. In case you're already familiar with establishing UDP connections with Netcat and UDP hole punching or you just don't feel like watching that first video, I'll do a very quick recap now. In the previous video, I essentially had two cloud servers, one in New York and one in California, and I ran a series of commands. The first command was the command to actually punch the hole and then listen on a particular port. I ran that on both the first machine and the second machine. And then from there, I was able to run a new command where I reversed the ports to exchange messages between the server. It's worth restating that in the first video, as well as this video, both of the two machines that are communicating with one another do not have any ports open on the firewall and are not communicating through a third server. Anyway, that's the 30 second summary. If you want the eight minute version, definitely watch the first video. Now the one drawback of the Netcat version is I needed to actually hard code the IPs in the commands themselves. In the Python version I've implemented what is called a rendezvous server. And the whole point of this server is the two clients can connect to the rendezvous server and then the rendezvous server will basically exchange the IP import information with the respective clients. And once it exchanges that IP import information, its role is completely finished. And when I demonstrate this in a little bit, you'll notice that I can turn off the rendezvous server in the middle of it and the chat messages will still work fine. And the code that makes this happen is pretty straightforward. Listen on UDP 55555 and then wait for new connections. Once a new connection comes in, then add it to the client's list. Once the client's list has two elements in it, then Take both those clients and exchange it with each server. And once it exchanges the information with the two clients, then it just kind of starts over. The client code is a little bit longer, but it has four main parts, connecting to the rendezvous server, doing the actual UDP hole punching, listening for messages, and sending messages. And we'll cover each of those individually. Now keep in mind the rendezvous server is not necessarily required. It is in this case because it was coded to use it, but if you wanted to hard code IPs, that would work fine too. This is just a nice little upgrade that I wanted to do just because I thought it was neat. Now connecting to the rendezvous server acts more like a client server connection than it does a peer to peer. So the code reflects that. The first step is to just connect to the rendezvous server and then wait for it to send data. Now remember back in the server file, it's going to say ready once you connect. And then once there's two clients, it's going to send the IP and port data to both. Once the client detects that the message ready was sent, then it's going to output checked in with server waiting. Now, if this is the first client, it's going to actually wait. Sock.receive is going to be a blocking call, meaning that the code's going to stop right here. Once the second client connects and it's ready as well, then this is going to resolve with the IP import information that the rendezvous server sends down. And after that, we're just unpacking IP source port and desk port. And this comes directly from here. It's the same format. So I just want to demonstrate real quick what we've done up to this point, connecting to the rendezvous server and having that server exchange IP import information with both clients. I have three terminals here. These are three individual machines. The first one is server. That's going to be our rendezvous server. And then we have client one and we have client two. And this is going to be the two peers that are going to talk to each other. So for the server, we can start the server code and that'll just sit there listening. For the client one, we can do client.py and you can see it connects connection from IP import, connecting to rendezvous server, checked in with server waiting. Now for the second client, I can do the same thing and run it. And you can see that it said, got two clients, sending details to each. And then each of these clients shows the information about the other peer. And at this point, the rendezvous server has served its purpose and both of these clients has the proper information that they need to establish a peer-to-peer -peer connection with each other. Now for the UDP hole punch, the listening and the sending, this is going to be the Python implementation of the respective netcat command. So what I've done is in each section, I've supplied the actual netcat command that I'm replacing. So step one is to do the actual UDP hole punch. To do this is pretty simple. Create a new UDP socket, bind to the source port, and then send just any information to the IP and desk port. The next step is to listen for messages. We're going to do this operation on a separate thread. So we're going to start by creating a UDP socket. We're going to listen on the source port and then in an infinite loop, we're going to wait for that socket to receive information. When we get that information, we're going to print it out to the screen. 
The last step is actually sending messages. So for this, we're gonna create a new UDP socket. We're gonna to bind to the destination port instead of the source port. That's because the sending process, the ports are reversed. And then in infinite loop, we're going to ask for the message to send. And then we're gonna send that to the IP and the source port. That's it for the code. The only thing left to do is to test it. So for the server, just like before, we'll start the server. And then for each client, we're gonna start the client. So I run that, it says checked in, waiting. It's waiting for the other client to connect. So once we run this, then it says got two clients sending details to each. Now at this point, I should be able to chat. Hello, how are you? And you can see it shows up on the other client. And then I can write down here, you know, I'm great. Now keep in mind that the rendezvous server doesn't matter. I'm just turning that off. The rendezvous server is no longer in the picture, but you can see it still works. It still works. Now this will continue working as long as you send one message every like 15, 20 seconds or so, because once that UDP hole closes, then this will no longer function. And although not necessary for this demonstration, if this was a real chat application, then one thing that it should be doing is exchanging keep alive packets with each other just to keep that UDP hole open forever. Because although it only lasts 20, 30, 40 seconds or so, if you send a message through it, it opens for another 20, 30, 40 seconds. So it's been about a minute. We'll see if it's still alive. Are you alive? Oh, so it's actually still working. Eventually that will time out, but just not yet. What's cool is this code should work with any two computers, any two clients, with any network configuration, and pretty much any firewall with the exception of blocking outbound UDP. Of course, that wouldn't work. I got a couple comments on my last video, people saying, well, you could just open the ports. And, and yes, that's absolutely correct. But if you did that, that kind of defeats the purpose of peer to peer because what you've created at that point is just a, a client server relationship. With this, this requires no port forwarding and no special firewall rules. I did not do anything special to make this work. I just put the code on two freshly created virtual machines on DigitalOcean and I just ran them. And that's all for the video. If you want more information on the Netcat version and UDP hole punching in general, you can watch the first video I made on this. Otherwise, if you have any questions or feedback, please leave it below in the comments. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.